This video will provide you a countdown on seven ways how to stop wasting your life away. Let's get started with number seven. Eat more humble pie. When we hear about eating humble pie, it usually has a negative association to it. As in, you were offered help with your problem, but insisted you could do it on your own. Then you failed miserably and have to eat humble pie and admit you needed help after all. I've noticed too many people waste their lives because they have too much pride. They can't admit when they're wrong, can't let people help them, and they often feel stuck and miserable because of it. Start eating humble pie today. Admit you're not perfect. Admit when you're wrong and accept help when needed. Number six, have more uncomfortable conversations. Tim Ferriss has said, a person's success in life can usually be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations he or she is willing to have. I've noticed being truthful with other people and being truthful with ourselves can make us incredibly uncomfortable. And because we tend to avoid what makes us uncomfortable, our success in life is hindered. The starting point is with yourself. Provide honest answers to questions like, am I making excuses for why I'm not succeeding? Am I blaming others and failing to take responsibility for my life? It's taken me many years to understand this, but I've learned it's best to be honest with yourself and try to make the necessary corrections than to lie to yourself and remain stuck where you are. Number five, test your glue. I'll never forget this one woman I encountered while doing an internship at a hospital in my last year's graduate school. She had been in bed for days, feeling lethargic and depressed. Doctors encouraged her to get up and walk around and socialize with other patients, but she kept refusing, stating, I can't, I'm glued to the bed. Now she wasn't literally glued to the bed, but in her mind, she was. Because she believed she was stuck, she didn't even attempt to move out of bed. I think we all have this mental glue that keeps us stuck where we are. It's often an insecurity. I'm not talented enough. I'm not attractive enough. I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have enough money. I'm not creative enough. I'm not lucky enough. But like that woman in the hospital, could the glue be in your imagination? Why not test your glue? Why not try getting up out of bed to overcome your insecurities and developing your weaknesses? Number four, accept you're not the sun. A lot of our frustration and disappointment stems from believing we are the center of the universe and the world revolves around us. When we become too self-absorbed and think we are more important than we really are, we miss out on the wonderful moments of joy. It was John Piper who said, the really wonderful moments of joy in this world are not the moments of self-satisfaction, but self-forgetfulness. Self-forgetfulness involves letting go of believing people are here to serve you, and instead believing you are here to serve other people. Number three, stop being nice. Nice people are often perceived as weak, and there's a popular saying that says, nice people finish last. But kind people don't have that same perception, even though they are synonyms. So what is the difference between being nice and being kind? To me, nice is when you're being helpful and considerate with strings attached. As in, you'll be friendly as long as the other person is friendly. You'll be helpful at work as long as it leads to a future promotion. When nice people don't get what they're expecting, they are subject to change their behavior to match the other person. With this mentality, your character can't be developed. To me, kind is when you're helpful and considerate, not because you'll receive something, but because it's part of your character. It's who you are. You forgive even when people don't forgive you. You're patient with people even when they aren't patient with you. You give to others and you don't worry and stress about receiving an equal portion back. With this mentality, your character can be developed. Number two, put your heart into it. It was Mother Teresa who has said, it's not what you do, but how much love you put into it that matters. There's a lot about your life that you can't control, but you can always control your attitude. Start looking to put your heart into your work and other people, and you'll find one of the fastest ways to start enjoying your life. And number one, consume less, create more. 
There are mega successful people out there who have earned a fortune and don't need to work another day in their life. But why do they keep working so hard? It's because it's through creation where we have the most meaning. Author Brene Brown has said, as long as we are creating, we're cultivating meaning. Consuming can provide momentary pleasure, but it pales in comparison to the fulfillment of creating a meaningful life. You'll likely feel lowest when you're consuming too much. Consuming too much TV, consuming too much junk food, and consuming too much information. I'm all for you watching videos like this one, but don't just consume it. Use it to create positive actions that will enrich your life. Make the effort to consume less and create more. Create more art. Create new experiences by stepping out of your comfort zone. And create more memorable moments with people who matter most to you. There are many helpful tips out there on how to stop wasting your life away. Please feel free to add to the discussion by sharing your favorite tip from this video and adding tips that we didn't discuss in the comments section of this video. Also, if you're looking for more ways to transform your thinking for the better, consider checking out my latest book, The Other Side of Life. Gain a positive perspective and see life more clearly. I'll put links below to purchase the Kindle, paperback, and audiobook formats of the book. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.